All right, we are back. 2022, the best products of the year that Audio Hawks reviewed. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics. I hope you guys are having an awesome 2022 and you're ready for a great holiday. I'm excited. The family's excited. We covered a lot of great products this year. Obviously, we can't give every product a product of the year because there's so many out there. But I wanted to give a list of all the different products that we reviewed that really stood out. Every product that's on this list is something that Audioholics has reviewed. We have a lots of experience with these products. We feel like these are kind of class leading products in their category on the stuff that we cover for 2022. So I put together a little PowerPoint presentation. We have the editorial article on the AudioHawks homepage right now. It gets more detailed into each product. We have every product review that's linked into each of these products. We have affiliate links. So if you guys want to click on those and purchase them, we appreciate it the little kickbacks we get from that. And I just want a full disclosure that we do have Audio Vice as our channel partner. We're very appreciative of that, but they don't dictate what, review, what we review or what we say. We request the products from them and it just works out really great in the long run. So here we are, I have a PowerPoint presentation I wanna show you guys. And bear with me, it's, I'm not very well versed in PowerPoint, so I kind of put this together at the last minute. So the first product I'd like to talk about is the AV receiver category. And this is best AV receiver that we reviewed in 2022. I'm gonna have to give it to Anthem. I really have fallen in love with the MRX 1140. I also bench tested the 740. I have the 1140 that's in the smart house right now. It's being used in the bedroom system in a 5.2.2 two configuration and I will be covering that in a separate video. But let me tell you something, the Anthem is not the most powerful receiver in its category by far. There are more powerful receivers. It's not the cheapest in its category. I mean, there are other receivers that give you more features, more power for less money. But what really blows me away about the Anthem products is just their user interface. The Anthem Arc room correction is just awesome. It's out of all the room correction systems out there, I have to say it's probably the easiest to use with the least amount of fuss. Meaning that you set it up in the room with a microphone. It's a PC editor software. You don't have to have the receiver in the same room as the microphone. You plug the microphone into your laptop that's on the same network. This is invaluable for installers and integrators because most of the time they put the AV equipment in a separate rack in a, in a closet not in the same room as the speakers or the, or the display. So that's a real advantage Anthem has over most of its competition is the fact it can do that. But Arc Genesis really does work. Their phase alignment tool um, and the all pest filter integration between the subwoofer and the LCRs works wonders. I can tell you that maybe in a five or 10, probably 10 minute setup, I got this thing up and running. I had excellent blend between the clip heritage soundbar, passive soundbar, and the JL Audio in-wall or in-ceiling subwoofers. I had incredibly good integration, better than I could have done manually, certainly in 10 minutes. And it just sounded right. You know, it limited the bandwidth to about, uh, I limited it to about 500 Hertz. You could of course increase that. I just got great calibration results. All I had to do basically was, was up the bass to my liking and I was off to the races. But it's a great receiver. Um, it, it runs cool. It doesn't get hot in a rack. And that's because only five of the channels are class AB, the critical bed channels, and then the rest of the channels are class D. They're not the super high power class D amplifiers, but they're adequate for high channels. And the thing about this receiver is it's an 11 channel receiver, but it's got 15 channels of processing. So you could go and add external amplification to your heart's content. It's got two independent subwoofer outputs. It's just a great product. I love the TFT display on it. It doesn't look like a cheap generic receiver. It actually looks like a high-end component. Now, if you already have amplification, I would tell you guys to go get the AVM70 instead. That's their pre-pro version of this receiver. It doesn't have any of the amplification in it. It's about the same price at like $4,100, $4,200. That's really the best pre-pro, in my opinion, in this price category. So if, it was given, if I was given the award for pre-pros this year, I would definitely say the AVM70 because it's a great value for a dollar and it has excellent performance. 
But I also want to give an honorable mention to Yamaha. I also bench tested the Yamaha RXA 6A Avantage. That is a very powerful receiver. The thing is a beast. It weighs like over 40 pounds. It's got 150 watts times nine, all class AB. So it, and it doesn't run super hot. Some of these class AB amplifiers receivers, when they have all the channels class AB, they tend to run hot like the Den and the Marantz. They put a, a lot of heat sinking in this receiver. It's a pretty hefty receiver. It's built like a tank. But the only problem I say about it is it's got a face only a mother could love. It's just a weird looking design for Yamaha. They took a steel constructed chassis and then they wrapped it in plastic. And then they put a ridiculously large volume control that sticks so far out of the receiver that it makes it difficult to put it in an entertainment center. So I don't know what they're doing with that. Hopefully next year they change the cosmetics. But this thing sounds great. I spent time listening. I did a lot of two-channel listening. I hooked it up with speakers ranging from Paradigm to my Revels that you see back here, the F328s. This receiver sounded like I was listening to my Denon A110 integrated amplifier. I mean, it had a nice meaty sound to it. And it does four ohms really well. You can see in my bench test reports, it did that really well. It's got nine channels of ampl amplification built in, 11 channels of processing, two independent subwoofer outs. The best thing is it's got manual PEQ, seven bands per channel, four bands for the subwoofer channel, and their, their YPOW has improved. Now, YPOW is not to the level of Anthem Arc Room Correction or Dirac or even um, Odyssey with the editor app, but they've come a long way, and it does less harm than it does uh, in the past. And you could always import those filters and do manual calibrations yourself. So there's a lot of flexibility there. I like the surround AI processing when you're watching Dolby Atmos movies. They've got the Oro 3D upgrade on it and they have the AK upgrade as well. It's a well-built receiver and you know Yamaha uh, reliability is just legendary. So out of all the receivers at this price point at $2,500, very hard to find something built to this level. It also has balanced XLR preamp outputs for the two channels and then balanced XLR inputs are for an analog source. Uncommon to find in an AV receiver, especially of today. So excellent receiver. Don't discount Yamaha, even though it's got a face a mother could love. All right. So the next category is best amplifier. And I try not to get overly excited when I measure something that just blows me away. And But this is one that's really hard not to be excited about. The NAD or NAD M23 Class D stereo amplifier is one of those products that had me basically redoing my test fixture to measure the true how low the true distortion is on this amplifier and how low the noise is on it. Best in class, best I've ever measured. And I've been measuring amplifiers for over two decades. This thing is just unbelievable. Check out my test report. I have it written. It's on the AudioHawks website, but we also have a YouTube video as well. But it's 200 watts a channel at two ohms. It doubles down to four uh, to 400 watts times two at four ohms. And I'm sorry, 200 watts at eight ohms, 400 watts at four ohms. It's bridgeable, so you could get about a kilowatt of power out of it. It's not something I would recommend. I don't think this amp really should be bridgeable. There's certain things you have to do to make it really optimized for bridging, and it compromises its regular two-channel performance. And NAD found kind of the best compromise in between, but it's an expensive way to do monoblocks because this thing is, uh, you know, thirty-seven hundred bucks. I don't think it's best suited as a <clears throat> as a bridgeable amplifier. But as a two-channel stereo amp, I mean, it's so freaking clean. The noise floor on it is so low. It's like it's almost like when you get a really good OLED TV and you see those black levels really, really dark that it makes everything pop. It's that kind of uh, feeling you get when you listen to this, an amplifier of this caliber. Now, the downside to an amplifier like this is you better make sure you match it with a preamp that has really low distortion as well. If you go and put this on a mediocre electronics, you basically undo the benefits of the low distortion, low noise. So this is a great amplifier. It's beautifully built. It's got that brushed aluminum case on it. It looks like a million bucks. It's got the capacitive touch button on the top for power that lights up. I mean, I just... I love this amp and they also have a seven channel version of it, the M28. And I think it retails for about 5,500 bucks. So the only thing that I would say is I was almost not going to give it the award because my test unit blew out in a short circuit condition. And it turned out there was a small batch run of these amplifiers where the trace thicknesses on the PWBs was not sufficient. 
and the amplifier basically would would short out the traces before the short circuit protection kicked in. So NAD has identified this problem and they're looking at any models that are out there that have uh, production issues. And of course, if you have one of these and you have any issues, I'm sure they will honor the warranty on it. Um, I don't know really if anyone else that's having these problems, it was more of a lab condition that I dealt with when I was putting this through its torture test. So bottom line though, is this is definitely state-of-the-art amplifier, the best I've ever measured lightweight it sounds great embrace class d because it's here to stay it's actually got better performance than most linear a b amplifiers and that's something to really be happy about the fact that it's load invariant means whatever speaker you drive it's going to sound consistently good the frequency response does not change based on load impedance which was a problem with a lot of the class d's of yesterday and even some of them from today that's not the problem here. It's got the Purify Class D module, which is state-of-the-art in every regard. So the next category is best tower speakers. Now we reviewed a lot of expensive towers. We had some great ones like the Paralysons, uh, the R-Series. We had the Paradigm Founders, the uh, 100s. Awesome speakers, Focal we reviewed. But you know what? For the money, for 2,200 bucks a pair, these Polk Reserve R700s are way too good for their asking price. And I hate to say that because I don't want to see Polk raise the price on them. But these are the real McCoy, man. If you're looking to spend about two grand for a pair of towers, I don't know of a better speaker. I mean, James Larson is very pragmatic and he just basically gushed over these speakers. They're built really well. I love the uh, outriggers they have on them. They're a three-way four driver design with dual eight-inch base drivers, a six and a half inch turbine mid and a one inch ring radiator tweeter. I like the fact that they give you a six and a half inch mid, you get more dynamic range out of it. That turbine cone gives it more stiffness, so it's much more rigid. You know, it's uh, just an incredibly well uh, thought out design. Those eight inch base drivers have nice big surrounds on them. They have good excursion and that power port that's loaded on the bottom of the cabinet. It just, there's no port chuffing. It's a very clean base that you get out of them. They have reasonably high sensitivity at 88 dB at 2.83 volts at one meter. Now these are four ohm speakers, so I do recommend that you have a stout amplifier to run them. You know, either a really high end receiver, even like that Yamaha, the RXA 6A will drive these fine, but you would definitely get the best results out of these speakers in a two channel environment if you have a good uh, two channel dedicated amp that's good and happy with four ohm speakers. And these things are built really well. They're 80 pounds a piece. And they're just a wonderful sounding product, lots of dynamic range, good output. Now, if you're looking for a center, a center channel to match with them, they do have a center channel in the reserve series. It's an MTM, which is fine if you're sitting on axis or within 10 or 15 degrees is, is perfectly fine. But if you're sitting more than 20 degrees off axis, you probably wanna go with the Legend, uh, the L400. We reviewed that center channel a couple of years ago. That's a WTMW, so it has a woofer, tweeter, and then a mid-range vertically underneath it, and then another woofer to, on the other side. And that gives you incredibly good, consistent off-axis performance for every seat. So every seat will sound good. That's what, what we recommend as a center channel pairing with the Reserve R700s. Check these out, they're awesome. And I have to give an honorable mention to a German company called Heco. Now, I wasn't really aware of Heco until I met with the guys at Audio Advice, and they're the only distributor, as far as I know, in the United States for the brand. And they're putting out some really good high value products. And uh, James Larson, again, was very impressed with the speaker. It's a three way four driver design, it has basically almost an eight inch paper cone for the base, two of them, 6.7 inch paper mid, and then a 1.1 inch soft dome tweeter. They have excellent linearity, great dynamic range. They're basically a poor man's R700. They just don't have quite as much base output or extension as the Polks. But you know what? Uh, the fact that these are $1188 a pair on sale, normally $1,600 a pair through AudioVice, that's one hell of a deal. It's almost half the price of the Polks, which means if you're going to put together a home theater system, you might want to get these, save some money, and get a couple of subs since you're going to need subs anyway. It's just a good alternative. Now the Polk is definitely a better speaker all around, but for the money, this is half the price and it's it's giving you pretty close to that performance of the Polk. It's a really good speaker. And uh, the sensitivity on it is really high. It's 93 dB sensitivity. So that means it plays louder with low wattage. So that's another advantage if you have, you know, you're pairing this with a receiver and you just have a lower budget. This is definitely a secondary alternative to the Polk, a very good alternative to the Polks. 
Next category is probably from a company you've never heard. Um, it's a best active speakers from Sigberg Audio. It's called the SBS.1. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on in this speaker. It's, it's a reasonable size bookshelf speaker built extremely well. It's fully active, meaning that there's no analog crossovers in it. All the amplification is built in. All the uh, crossovers are done in the digital domain. So you get perfect blending between the drivers. The mid-range has is a concentric driver with a tweeter in the middle, and they just sound really freaking amazing. Now, these are not full range speakers, so you do need to mate them with good subwoofers. In fact, Sigberg makes a subwoofer called the 10D. It's another $2,900. Very musical subs, it's got very low group delay, so it's very tight. When you combine those subwoofers with this speaker, you're getting state-of-the-art full range design, full range sound, very accurate sound, really good imaging capabilities, very reasonable size, wide dynamic range. It hits a clean 110 dB for a speaker of this size with dual five and a quarter inch drivers. I mean, that's just pretty amazing. They use really high quality drivers. So if you're into uh, active speaker design, you definitely want to check these out. They have a built in nine band PEQ for all your adjustability and tweaking that you want. And definitely give them some love if you're into active speakers. We really were impressed with this brand. Next is best budget subwoofer. Now we've given the RSL Speedwoofer 10S, the older version product of the year when that came out, we were in love with that speaker. And what they did with this one now is they modernized it. So now they've got DSP control on the driver. They've got, you know, improved amplification, a little bit more power. It's 400 watts RMS, 1,000 watts peak, very high quality cast 10-inch frame woofer. It has real frequency response below 30 hertz, good headroom, two-year warranty on the amplifier, 30-day trial period. It's just a beautiful subwoofer. It's a medium-sized basaholic room size rating for a sub of that size. And they're $450 and that includes shipping. I mean, it's really, they're the class leader. I don't know of any other subwoofer at that price point that could compete in its overall performance. So I would highly recommend you get two of these subwoofers if you can, and you have the benefits of multiple subs and get more output. Excellent subwoofer, definitely check them out. And um, we'll be doing more coverage of newer products coming from RSL down the pipe in 2023. So stay tuned on that. So the best high-end subwoofer, again, is a company that we love. Uh, we've been checking out their products for the last couple of years since they came on the scene. They've been doing some incredible work with the S-Series, and now they have the R-Series is Perilisten. It's the R212S, and this is basically their 12-inch push-pull subwoofer design. It's, it's similar to the S-Series, but it's just more cost-reduced. It's got 12-inch drivers, 1.3-kilowatt uh, amplifier, extremely low distortion, Ruler flat frequency response, perf you know, incredible, phenomenal time domain performance, as you could see in James Larson's measurements, especially in the group delay measurement. This thing is clean, tight, fast. If you like really musical bass, very hard to beat this. Now, it's not an output king. It's not giving you the extreme bassaholic room size rating, but they do give a large rating. And if you get two of these, you could probably hit the extreme in your room. And you're just getting a really highly sophisticated, well-engineered subwoofer. It's not cheap. It's almost about $5,000, but the build quality on it's top notch. The performance is top notch. Sound quality. Everything about Perilisten from what we've seen so far has just been blowing us out of the water. I've got the S7Ts in my family room system with the matching uh, center channel, and I just think it's a great sounding, very accurate uh, speaker system, very well built. So definitely check those out if you're in the market for a $5,000 subwoofer. I know it's a lot of money, but man, state-of-the-art performance right there. So the best active noise canceling wireless headphones, and there's a lot of them on the market. Um, in fact, I'm going to be looking at the Mark Levinson's um, next year. I've gotten in a pair of those. I'm very excited to check those out and listen to those. But in the meantime, what we've listened to, we've got a variety of different active noise canceling headphones that we reviewed in 2022. We really like the Focals. I don't know how to say that. I say it's baths. My wife says it's Batiz. Bathies, I don't know. You guys give me comments down below because I butcher names. In fact, I want to do a video on how names and audio can often be butchered. And I'm the king of butchering names because I'm really bad at pronouncing some of these. But anyways, the Focal basically rebuilt their driver. It's aluminum, magnesium, m dome driver with a formless voice coil for energy efficiency and lightness. They use a Qualcomm Bluetooth APXT um, adaptive stream. And Wade Robson was 
really enjoying these uh, headphones. He does most of our headphone reviews and he found them to have punchy dynamic range in a spacious acoustic isolation from the noise canceling. The noise canceling worked really well. There's, the cool thing about this is it has a unique DAC mode. So you basically let you connect directly to your USB source. It bypasses the wireless codec altogether. So you get even improved performance there. They look beautiful. Focal headphones have always been constructed really well. You get a lot of high sense of pride in ownership when you own a Focal headphone. And they're reasonably priced, 800 bucks for an active noise canceling, high performance headphone. Definitely if you're on the market, check these out. Give me some comments if you own these. I'm sure there's a lot of headphone enthusiasts out there that will give us some ex of their experiences here. So now if you want the best stocking stuffer or you wanna put a, a really awesome product under the tree, I'll, it's, I'm almost embarrassed for Monoprice that they're selling a headphone this good for so little. I mean, it's that good, an active noise canceling wireless headphone, $130 retail, and I think it's on sale now for $80 last time I checked. In fact, check the links down below in the video description and you will see that. Um, these are over-ear noise canceling headphones. They're active noise canceling. They have Dirac Virtuo DSP built in. They have touch and gesture control on the outer shell of the right ear cup. So there's not even any buttons. They use gesture control. And Wade Robson, again, found the quality, the sound quality to be stellar. And the Dirac just basically ekes out every little bit more of the sound stage and imaging while it's buffing out all of the frequency range. So how could you beat that for 80 bucks or even 130 bucks to get active noise canceling with Dirac built into it? That's awesome. Monoprice has really been stepping up their game every year, whether it's their monolith speakers, the monolith subwoofers or their amplifiers. They are really carving out an incredible niche in the audiophile community of giving you high performance for very little money, pretty much class leading in every one of their product price points that they're hitting. So definitely check these out if you're looking for budget headphones. The next category, and we've given them a, a um, award last year of the Rocksteady uh, Stadium speakers. Now they've got a matching sub. We complained that there wasn't enough bass with the uh, with the wireless portable speakers. They sounded great. They had great battery life. I think it was over 16 hours of battery life. And you could connect multiples of them with that RSS technology. You could literally connect infinite numbers of them. Well, they basically answered our critique and they came out with this powered wireless subwoofer, battery powered subwoofer. I think it's the only one of its kind, especially at this kind of level of performance with their claiming 30 Hertz bass extension. Now I didn't measure it, Wade didn't measure it, but he was, was just really enjoying the bass extension that this thing was providing on top of the speakers when he connected it. And especially if you put this up against the surface, you get more boundary gain from that, you get a little bit boost. So these things are really incredible. I think the retail on it's $200, $159 on sale. If you want wireless portable speakers, you could take to the beach, bring it to a dorm, whatever you want. Definitely look at this company, Rocksteady. Now they have an excellent satellite speaker, which we reviewed and gave product of the year last year, but now they have a matching subwoofer. It'd be cool if you could get a bunch of these subs and line them up and connect them up and, and see what kind of a system you could put together. Just imagine you could do whole home audio now just with this ecosystem. Just keep connecting these one by one and you've got yourself a, an easy um, wireless connection, battery powered if you need it, so it's portable. Very cool company, definitely check them out. And now the last but not least, we have the best budget sound bar. Now, Teo Nicolakis is a very positive re reviewer. He loves all things audio. He was not expecting for $200 to get a sound bar that actually really enhanced the performance or the audio of what was coming out of your standard TV. But this Roku, whoever is doing the engineering at Roku is doing a really great job, the audio side of things. So for $200, you have a built-in 4K Roku streamer, which those by themselves are around 100 bucks. You're getting the Roku streamer built in. You're getting a, a very um, competent sound bar. And then it's something you could build upon. You could actually add their powered subwoofer, wireless, and you could add their satellite speakers. So you could do a full 5.1 system that's easy to set up and connect for about 500 bucks. Very hard to beat that, guys. And this product looks great. It's it's It fits into your decor very easily. Definitely check this out. If you're just getting started or if you have, maybe you have a kid that's going away to college and they're setting up a TV in their, in their uh, entertainment area, 
definitely consider getting one of these Roku sound bars and then adding the subwoofer if they want some bass and adding the satellite speakers if you want to do surround sound. Excellent uh, value per dollar for about 500 bucks. So I wanted to make sure we hit all the spectrum of audio, not just $5,000 subwoofers, but $500 complete 5.1 wireless systems. So I think we, we did a pretty good job this year of covering the whole gamut of products. And then, of course, I want to give a happy holidays to all of our fans. Special thanks to our reviewers, James Larson, of course, Teo Nicolakis, Wade Robson, Tony Leota, Jacob Green, Matthew Pose, Steve Feinstein, and Don Dunn. Get her done, done. I want to give a special thanks to our partner at Audio Advice. You know, they have been such an awesome channel partner to work with not only in, in um, providing us a way to do affiliate for you guys to get you, uh, you know, direct links to buy the stuff that we review, but the fact that they provide such excellent content that we have so many agreements on with their, with their core philosophies and our core philosophies. They have that home theater designer tool, which is really a great tool for someone that wants to figure out where to place their speakers or what kind of screen size they need or how far the projector needs to be away. Definitely check that out. We are very happy with them. They have an audio advice live event we covered last year. They're going to be doing it again next year. We're very excited about that trade show that keeps getting, it looks like it's going to be getting even bigger next year. So I can't wait to cover that. And I want to give a special thanks to my wife, Bertha Della Sala, who is instrumental part of our success. She's our social media manager. She's our finance manager. She makes sure that we get paid so we can continue to do what we do. And she keeps me fed because I am a very grumpy person if I don't have proper protein and I don't eat well. So special thanks to my wife and my family that's very supportive. And of course, a very special thanks to our fans all over the world. I can't believe how many emails I get, you know, international emails, especially from YouTube, you know, from countries I didn't think people were watching us on. But I really appreciate all the love that you guys have given us this year and years prior. And I'm hoping that everybody has a great 2023. I hope everyone has an, a wonderful Christmas. Guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And if you don't mind, stay tuned at the end of this video. My 15-year-old daughter wanted to sing a Christmas song, and I had her record it. I'll put it out at the end for a little surprise for you guys. Anyways, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Be kind and be loving to everyone. And let's have a great 2023.
checking the list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness' sake. So you better watch out. You better not cry.